Hey everyone, welcome back to Juco Jam. I'm Nick Nielsen. Along with me, as always, is the great one, the Juco advocate himself, Brandon Goble. Mr. Goble, are you ready to get into the rewind and talk about what was in junior college basketball last week? Let's do it. I think we got uh, we got some some hot games that happened uh, this last week, and then and then this coming week. Woo. Amazing. The schedule. Maybe maybe the best of the regular season. We'll see. We'll see. It looks it looks juicy. But Monday night in in the Whack Jack and. For those who have questioned me, Mom, it's the Western Junior College Conference, right? Help me out here, Brandon. My mom Western asked me Junior the other day, Western College Athletic Conference. I okay. think there's an A in there. Yeah. But it's Western Texas. It's it's South Plains. It's Odessa. It's Howard. It's Midland. It's New Mexico. It's Nimi. Frank Phillips. Western Who was the Texas. first one to say whack jack, though? Because Weird. the J and the C are flipped in the pronunciation. Um, are, are there other people doing it, or is it just us now? No, I think everybody calls it the whack jack for All sure. Right. It just I think we we may have willed it into existence. But <laughs> um in Western Texas, there were you know two really good games last week. South Plains uh defeated Howard 74 to 61. Uh Joey Medimba 22 and 6. Howard only hit four out of 18 from three. South Plains, another really good performance from them. Jalen Hampton, 15 and 12. Kerwin Price, 15 and 13. And South Plains out rebounded Howard 47 to 30. Yeah, South Plains has just continued week in, week out to show why they're the number one team in the country. Um, you know, Hayden's got those guys playing so well. Uh, you know, if if there's any let up at any point from from anybody, someone else is picking up the baton and going with it. They defend really, really hard. Joey Medimba is a phenomenal player. It almost feels like a, a great defensive effort to hold him to 22 with how he's been playing, but... Um, you know, Joey, Joey got some things done, but really, you know, they just kind of clamped in everywhere else and, and shut it down. And, uh, you know, a big thing for, uh, coach Sowers is getting on the glass. Um, and so, you know, the, to go and out rebound Howard by 17, they just never really gave Howard a chance there, especially when the shooting woes kind of kick in, you got to win somewhere and you can't lose on the glass and not be able to make a three. A tough combination. And, um, uh... A great combination later that evening, New Mexico at home defeats Midland in a terrific basketball game, 95 to 93. Trey Clark was just sensational for Midland, puts up 13. Uh, for the Thunderbirds in the Thunderdome, as I like to call it, Antoine Massey with 13 and 12, Chaden Stone with 18. This was a really big win for New Mexico. Most aesthetically pleasing court in America, according to... Uh, uh, it doesn't get better than that big old bird. I love it. <laughs> um but uh so you know it's, it's the reddish orange and the yellow i don't know what the hex code is on that red but it's just right and it looks so good on television i think it's just something about the thunderdome too you know friend of the show sean gutting has coached at three different schools they've all been the thunderbirds new mexico casper now at southern utah so you know i think he's he's with you on on that one it's unbelievable but, uh we talked last week about this was this was starting to turn into a bit of a make or break uh, game for New Mexico. Uh, you know, there's still plenty of time to to make a run up those standings and and you know get some things done here. But uh, this was a big one for them. And you know, the other thing we talked about was uh, Antoine Massey probably needed to show up uh, big time to uh, for them to get the win here, and he did. Trey Clark had a phenomenal game for Midland, but New Mexico just kind of got it from all. Uh, areas this time and and Massey was a huge part of that Shaden Stone with 18 was big time uh, you know has had some ups and downs this year um, but you know showing up when it mattered most I mean this was you know you hate to say like a must win uh, in it, it's not even February yet but it was probably about as close to a must win as as they could have um, you know at this point of the season and then you know Saturday we transitioned to one of the most enjoyable basketball games I've watched in years and um, Lorenzo, Lorenzo Watkins doesn't think so, but Triton 110, Southeastern 87, somewhere a Triton Trojan just hit another three because they were reining them in. They hit 24 out of 35 three-point attempts. That's 69%. Uh, Amar Aguilar, 39 points. He hit 11 threes. In fact, one of them he even banked in in the second half. A.J. Dixon, 21. Dior Connors, 15. Dylan Williams, 10. The big four for Triton, 85 points. It was unbelievable. Wow. I mean, the the, the Holy Trinity steps up again. Uh, the, the firm. The firm. <laughs> I like that. I like that. The Holy Trinity of Triton, the firm, something. I mean, those three guards are 
uh, as good as it gets. And I talked to some, some D one coaches that were in town uh, for that one. And they just came away uh, really impressed with what coach Burns is doing there. Um, you know, the quality of play, the way that they're playing. Um, you know, we talked about before that, like, you know, Triton can't, can't do anything about the region that they're in. So, you know, they have to take big advantage of the opportunities that they get in non-conference play. And um, this is one of those. Uh, I mean, th this this game next week, we'll talk about it later. Uh, th this game this week, uh, we'll talk about later, the Triton Indian Hills game. Uh, Triton at Southeastern was incredible. Uh, Indian Hills at Triton is going to be uh, probably on a different level here, considering how both of these teams are playing. You almost wonder, you know, head coach Brian Burns of Triton is, is is starting to think like, hey, guys, maybe let's let's keep a couple of these in our pocket for Wednesday night or, you know, um, but that was a, just an incredibly impressive effort. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't like these were wide open shots that they were hitting. And to be honest with you, you know, junior college basketball, nobody can shoot across the board like <laughs> shoot, you know, shooting percentages are down like there's Triton, there's snow, there's nobody else. Um, but the efficiency to hit close to 70% from three, they hit 24 of them. I can never remember ever seeing a game like that in my life. Uh, there's a lot of teams that couldn't hit 24 out of 35 unguarded um, Tuesday at 10 a.m. I mean, it was just an incredibly impressive showing. Yeah, and and it, it, We've got two. Try it in Indian Hills. We get it twice. If you're Southeastern. I mean, at some point you just kind of throw your hands up in the air and you're like, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I guess, I, can't do anything else. <laughs> I guess if you're a Blackhawk fan, you're just glad this is not a tournament game and you just live to fight another day. And yep. maybe you feel at some point, you know, reversion to the mean law of large numbers, maybe nobody's going to hit a three pointer against them for the rest of the season. <laughs> Probably a trade off that they would take more, <laughs> more than just Triton talk. We go down to Florida into the panhandle. Chipola, a little bounce back game after going out of conference, out of state to Georgia Highlands, uh, upsets them earlier in the week. Chipola bounces back with an 83-72 win. We have three Indians in double figures. Greedy Williams with 17-7. and seven. Dante Walker, Zaka Littleton Jr. with 16 each. Uh, Chipola did a good job on the boards, out-rebounding Tallahassee 34-23. Tallahassee shot the ball really well, 10 out of 22 from three. Uh, but the difference... Chipola had 28 free throws, Tallahassee 16. Um, good bounce back win for Chipola and coach Donnie Tindall. Yeah, for sure. And you kind of figured that, that, you know, they would write the ship at home here after, uh, after the upset. Tallahassee is a team to watch out for next season. Um, he does a great job there. A new first year head coach at Tallahassee. And, uh, you know, he's going to get really good players in there. He's got some good players now. Um, it's just tough to, to go into a place like Chipola against Donnie Tindall. And then when you've got the law firm of Greedy Walker and Zocco uh, out there, just, just, you know, pumping the ball in like, you know, Chipola's Chipola's uh, Chipola needed to find a way to just have a nice win there and kind of take a breath, get everybody back on the same page uh, because this next month of the season coming up is going to be a whirlwind for him. Now, this point might be a time for you to take a big breath here because we're going to transition into the rundown. And this is going to feel like a warp speed version of the rundown because we have like 20 games to cover because <laughs> that's how good this week is. Hey, uh, if I if he says a game and I don't talk about uh, in depth on somebody, it's not personal. OK, right. I promise. There's just, there's just so many good games. We're going to move quick. Um, Monday, Whack Jack, Odessa Howard. What do you want to say? It's 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 Coach Bucket. It's 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 Coach Cooper. We have Joey Medimbo. We have Willie Lightfoot. You know the whack jack on the road is is a lot like uh, the Big Twelve on the road. Uh, it, it doesn't matter if Howard is having trouble finding some wins here and there right now. Oh, this is going to be a really really tough game. By the time this airs, this game will have already happened. But I can assure you that Nick and I will both be watching this one. Yeah, there's some places in the whack jack you just don't win. Like no one goes to Clarendon and win. Doesn't matter. Who, who it is, you don't go and, and, and beat the big green at home. Rage in the cage, day. baby. <laughs> all right. We're going to put on our Wednesday hat. I'm going to give you three games. All right. Indian River, Florida Southwest, Moberly Mineral Area, Wabash Valley, Olney. Give me the speed round on this. Indian River's got to find a way to win on the road here. Um, you know, they've they've had some ups and downs here recently, but this is a big opportunity for them to kind of, you know, stand back up and say, hey, this is who we are. We've got talent and, and they do have talent. You know, the way that they play is a little different. Um, and so, you know, that's that's always tough. Uh, Florida Southwestern is going to have to be ready for that. It's going to be a really tough game, but Indian River's got to find a way to win that one. Mineral area. Uh, I hate to say the surprise of the year, but 
I think uh, Coach Hire would also tell you that I'm not sure he thought they would be quite in this position um, at this point, especially with kind of how, you know, just piecing things back together, coming in, uh, getting the job late. Um, and then Wabash only. Wabash has been playing fantastic. Only has been playing really well. Both of these teams are just outside the top 25 with an opportunity to to maybe start kind of creeping up into those standings. I'm really interested, you know, uh, Moberly Mineral, we get this two more times in the rest of the regular season. And like nobody's scoring against Mineral Area, which is like Coach Hire can really coach defense. Held three rivers, I believe, to 48 points on um, on Saturday night. So that's going to be a fun game to watch. All right, I'm going to give you two at a time here. I'm going to catch your breath. Uh, Indian Hills Triton, Lee at Blinn. I'm going to start with Lee at Blinn. Um, you know, uh, you may have just killed a graphic, but go for it. Yeah, Lee, Lee College. You <laughs> Sorry, know what? Alexa. You know what? Sorry, what I'm going to do? We're going to talk about Lee. We're going to talk about Lee. We're going to talk about Lee. We're going to talk about Lee at Blinn. Uh, big opportunity for a road win here. Lee is playing fantastic. They're getting they're getting uh, scoring from all over the place. And uh, you know, we talked to Coach earlier um, and uh, and did the interview for the show here. And you know, he's talking about people stepping up. Uh, in different places. And they really have done that. If you go back and watch, they've had some injuries and things where just it's been next man up and they've been able to get that done. Um, so going to be a tough one for Blinn here, but Lee just kind of needs to hold serve on the road. And then Indian Hills Triton. And again, the reason I go to this one second is because this one just deserves all of the attention. I, I, I'm going to be, uh, tweeting out all day that even if you've never watched a junior college game in your life, you need to watch this game. It's going to be so much fun to watch. Both teams are loaded at the guard position. Both teams play hard. Both teams are incredibly well coached there. I mean, there's probably 12 to 14 division one players on the floor ranging from all levels. Uh, there's high major guys all the way down to low major guys and everything in between. Um, it's not to mention like three to five guys that could be like a conference player of the year somewhere next 100%. year. Too, right? There's going to be all Americans all over both of these rosters, you yeah. know? So, I mean, Aguiar's going to be an all American Trevion LeBeau is going to be an all American. Um, it's, it's going to be so it's going to be such a good game to watch. Can't miss. All right. And then um, we're going to conclude with a, um, with a triple play. No, no, just got two for you. Cloud at Barton, Northwest Florida at Chipola, DeMeo Tyndall. I'm not going to flip this one. We're going to start <laughs> with Cloud Barton. Um, Barton is so good. Barton is, is so, so good. Uh, will, Cla will, will, will Barton lose a regular season game from here on out? Do they run the table? I'll tell you what, man, if there's a chance for them to lose one, it might be against Cloud because of the way that Coach K-Strip plays, uh, you know, we've – we talk about a lot of cloud basketball on here with that, that cool Princeton offense. We're pro cloud. Uh, C is playing phenomenally. He's starting to get a lot of division one recruitment. I think I might've saw that he just got his first division one offer or second division one offer this week. Um, but then on the flip side, um, Malith is playing fantastic. Uh, uh, Lahai Jones is playing fantastic. Uh, and remember Barton is doing all of this with, um, you know, just uh, Mose is, is just not healthy yet. And so, um, you know, we've got a guy that that uh, coming in was, you know, an arguable preseason player of the year candidate. And Barton has kind of, you know, said, hey, man, we got you and had all these different guys step up. Um, it's if Barton were to run the table the rest of the way, I wouldn't say that I was shocked. And now Northwest Florida Chipola. Uh, you know, we, we talk about Indian Hills and Triton, how great of a game that is. Northwest Florida Chipola is not too, too far behind. Uh, you know, that's, that's two heavyweights just going to war. Uh, my, my, my big complaint that I have going on right now is <laughs> we need to shift the game times. Mm. Right. If, if we, ha if I had that power, I would, <laughs> um, I, I would like like a six o'clock tip and an eight thirty tip on those two games. Like I, Alexa, I want to be you said fully... a meeting. Thanks. I want to be fully vested <laughs> and see both uninterrupted. Alexa will set a meeting with the powers that be uh, on that. We'll see what she'll see uh, what she can get done for you. Yeah. I'm sure nobody uh, would have a problem playing a mid afternoon game um, for one <laughs> of their games of the year, but uh, you know, round one panhandle conference, you get each team three times. Chipola goes on the road and beats Northwest Florida. Um, if Chipola wins this game, they cinch the series. Yeah. That's a big one. Yeah. Yeah. And it, 
you know, it is always nice in conference to have an opportunity to have, you know, a, a signature win again. Um, you know, those are the kinds of things that really affect things like seeding and and all that sort of stuff where we're in conference. If you can circle those big conference wins against other teams that are, you know, top 12 teams in the country, uh, that, that means a lot. Um, and so, you know, grabbing one at home here, um, highly important for Chipola. All right, we're going to transition to Thursday night. Thursday night n- takes no backseat to Wednesday night. We're gonna we're gonna kick things off with South Plains at Odessa. Pretty good game. I don't know if you're into that kind of thing. <laughs> this is uh, this is another one. This is another war. If you're uh, into seeing twenty Division One players at one place <laughs> at the same time, if right. you're a Division One coach, you might want to check this one out. Right. I, I, don't, I can't remember exactly what uh, Odessa's record is off the top of my head, but um, I know South Plains is undefeated and uh, the number one team in the country. And when you can look at a game like this and say, OK, South Plains at Odessa. I, South Plains and Odessa is probably a pick em <laughs> at, at Odessa like that. Uh, I mean, how good is that? Right. How good how good of a basketball game is it when the national uh, number one team in the country uh, goes into Odessa and I mean it's a coin flip for who's going to win that game so uh, just high high level basketball I'm going to give you three in a row here Thursday night uh, Connor State NEO Pearl River Itawamba we love Mississippi too um, and Clarendon Midland yeah uh, we're kind of just getting to start to really see how good Connors can be um, you know, unfortunately just didn't have a, a strong non-conference schedule, but now that they're into the teeth of conference play, they're playing very well. Um, you know, that Braden Hubbard is a fantastic player. And so getting to see him, uh, you know, really kind of shine in these moments has been good, but, uh, NEO is year in year out, uh, a very good team, very well coached, um, that zone defense that they play drives everybody bonkers. Um, and so, you know, this, this should be a really, really good test. And this is one that I've circled for a while as I've talked to coaches about guys like Braden and stuff. And I said, Hey, watch that, uh, game at Neo. Um, you know, that's gonna, that's gonna probably tell you a few things, uh, about some of the guys, uh, Pearl river, big opportunity for a road win here to kind of, you know, start clawing their way up, uh, up those standings and, and start to draw a little bit more national attention and Clarendon at Midland, <clears throat> you know, now, now we're talking about Midland, uh, after dropping the New Mexico game, kind of, you know, needing to get uh, a big win here and, uh, you know, getting one at home would be important for him. Clarendon is playing great. Uh, Hunter does a great job there. They've got a lot of talent as well. Um, at Midland is, is a tough ask for him, but you know, they've got, they've definitely got the firepower to do it. And we're going to end Thursday night with Salt Lake at Snow. I personally think that this is a huge game for both teams when to try to stay in that at-large conversation because you kind of got three teams there, you know, out, out west with CSI, Salt Lake, Snow, all kind of probably converging into the same range of the rankings of, of 10 to 15. Salt Lake, I think, really got shocked by Utah State Eastern. Um, so I think this is a super important game for the mighty Bruins. Yeah. Um, you know, this is, this is, you know, it's not, we're not talking about must wins here, but to go get one on the road for, uh, against a team that's as good as snow and playing as good as snow is, uh, is, is, you know, it, it would be very important. Uh, I, I think uh, in boosting kind of where they're at with things, but Max triplet probably has other ideas at snow. Uh, I'm really excited to see the matchup of the big men in this one. Um, you know, they, they've both got, uh, multiple players, multiple division one players uh, in the low post and uh, watching those guys, uh, you know, crack their heads against each other is going to be a lot of fun to watch. And then the shooting that comes from both teams, uh, you know, both of them can just fill it up. So it should be, should be a really good game. Absolutely. And then we're going to consolidate Saturday into three games, Florida Southwest at Daytona state, Barton at Cali, and then Coffeeville at Butler. Yeah. Florida Southwestern at Daytona. Um, Daytona is is really really good. You know they dropped one earlier. They had kind of a close one here uh, this last weekend, but um, you know just really loaded with talent. Florida Southwestern phenomenally coached. Eric Murphy does a, a really good job there, and so they're going to uh, have just uh, played on Wednesday at home against Indian River, and then hit the road right away against another highly talented team. Um, you know Florida basketball is really 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 good this year. Uh, Barton at Cali. <laughs> Game of the weekend, 
you know, probably not close. Um, you know, this is, this is and a Cali fact. and Cali got him the first time on the road. That's yeah. Spartan's lone loss of the season. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is going to be a really good one. Uh, you know, last year, DeJour Reeves was, was maybe the guy that, uh, we love to talk about the most. Uh, we probably like talking about Jeff Nwankwo the most, uh, this year at Cali, um, has continued to be phenomenal. And so him at home, uh, you know, he's the kind of guy that's going to rise to the opportunity here uh, against a top team like this. So, you know, that's going to be a fun one to watch, you know, Butler needs a win uh, this weekend and Coffeyville's not having the kind of season that, that coach Herkelman would, would normally, um, you know, be happy with, or it wouldn't be happy with, but uh, they are still dangerous. And so Coffeyville at Butler is going to be another tough battle. Um, you know, Butler's got to find a way to get that one done and kind of, you know, Grizzlies need to stay in the top four, right? You got to keep staying in that mix, um, especially for at-large consideration and seeding in the region tournament. Believe That's it or not, awesome. Brandon, that concludes the rundown. We did, we did it. it. <laughs> stay with us. More to come. When we return, we're going to have Coach Nick Wade from Lee College with us. As the second largest intercollegiate athletic association in the country, the NJCAA serves not only a pivotal role in college athletics, but in higher education. The NJCAA Foundation aims to move the association forward through resources, grant programs, and other special initiatives. Your gift to the NJCAA Foundation will make a difference and create opportunities. Intensity fuels these champion student athletes to greatness. Zurich Insurance is proud to be the official provider of student athlete insurance for the National Junior College Athletic Association. Throughout the highs, we cheer along to their screams of victory. Throughout the lows, we support them through their tears of defeat. Zurich Insurance, helping student athletes play the sport they love. Welcome back to Juco Jam. We are in the spotlight with head coach Nick Wade from Lee College. Coach Wade, thanks so much for uh, joining us this, this afternoon. Hey, thanks a lot for having us, guys. I really appreciate it. Thanks for everything y'all do uh, for Juco. Uh, it's it's a, it's an arduous task for sure. You know, you don't get the resources everybody else has. So uh, if, you, if you don't hear from myself, our region, man, thank y'all because we really, really appreciate it. Well, we love it. So let me let me try to give you a proper introduction and and talk a little bit about some of the things that you've done at Lee College. So you're in your third season at Lee, 26 and six last year, 27 and six the year before. You're off to an 18 and two start this year. You have an incredible 71 and 14 record. That's an 835 winning percentage um, in your short time at Lee. Awesome job. So let's talk about, you know, this year's we kind of drill down a little bit. You guys have huge wins. I don't think there's too many in the country, too many teams in the country that have as strong a resume right now as you guys do with wins over CSI, Panola, Trinity Valley, uh, your only losses, uh, neutral court game to number one ranked South Plains. And then Angelina, you guys are uh, monsters on defense, allowing only 68.2 points a game. 39% field goal percentage, and you are holding opponents to 26.6% from behind the three-point line. And you guys have a really balanced attack, seven guys averaging seven or more points per game. What do you like most about this team? Um, first and foremost, uh, they're great kids. And, and I, and I want to start with that because the basketball part gets easy at times. Uh, we have phenomenal human beings that are an absolute joy to coach, incredibly respectful. Um, they allow me to coach them hard. They do work in the community. Uh, they're going to class every day. Uh, we had a 3.14 uh, GPA a as an athletic department and 3.08 as a basketball team. So I really want to love up my guys there because they really take uh, the totality of trying to be a good program seriously. Um, but the one thing I love about our team is that, uh, you know, uh, I feel that we're, we're deep and we have, you know, um, a lot of 
different versatile guys that can really, really help in different nights. So on nights when we're banged up, you know, I never worry. I never fret. We have somebody with the next man up mentality. Um, you know, we have a lot of freshmen that are doing incredibly well. Uh, a lot of the teams we've gone up, especially the better teams are sophomore laden. Um, I think the, the, the beauty behind our numbers is a lot of freshmen are really, really making big time, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, contributions to our team and, and for that. And, and again, the thing I love about my team too, is my staff, uh, I love coming and coaching with them every day. Uh, we laugh every day. Um, we get down to business every day. But I've been really, really fortunate just to be surrounded by, you know, incredible people. So That's awesome. Now, you guys play a really tough schedule. I kind of highlighted a couple of the wins that you guys have had early. Um, you know, at the end of the regular season, 29 of your 30 games are going to be against NJCAA competition. I mean, the only non-NJCAA game you played was right after Christmas, right. which is a nice little warm up to get uh, to get back into things. Talk a little bit about your philosophy um, and playing a strong schedule. And for folks that don't know, you started the season really with no warm up. You go out to Twin Falls um, and play three road game. So talk a little bit about your philosophy on scheduling. Yeah. And last year when we went to Twin Falls, I opened up Odessa CSI. So it like, it, <laughs> it, it was brutal, but um, I'm a coach that wants to know. I want to know uh, a lot of our players come to JUCO because they want an opportunity to play high level basketball after uh, their junior college experience. And, uh, and so uh, I want to make sure we get an accurate assessment of that. Um, I prayed it one day, you know, you know, whatever doors open that, you know, hopefully I can, you know, coach at a high level and I want to know how I stuck up, stack up against the uh, best coaches out there. But I want to know, um, sometimes you can get a record of, you know, a 20 and five or a 24 and six and, you haven't really tested your team. So when you get to tournament player, you've run into a high level team. It's a shock um, for us. I, I, I want it to be normal. And that's why we try to do most of those things on neutral courts or on the road. Um, I really just want to know as a coach, I don't want any, any surprises. And, and sometimes it's brutal because as a coach, you know, Ah, we may not have what it takes, whether it be maturity or not enough interior scoring or, you know, defensively, we're not good. Uh, but, you know, nine times out of 10, just me knowing as a coach, not only against good competition, um, you know, uh, who we are, what we need to get better at. It makes my job easier because uh, you could play some games that uh, you may win, but you didn't necessarily get better. And we always want to just push our guys and test our guys. And and um, and I think it's a great recruiting tool you know as well uh we're gonna put you on a platform where you're gonna play the best players in the country and against the best coaches in the country and at the end of the year I think you can rest your head knowing that hey we did our best against the best and 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 I'm always okay with that and that's kind of been the mantra of Lee College and and what we've tried to do and kind of in my career as well just hey you guys are the best you know I respect that I love that but I'm a competitor too and, and I want to compete at the highest levels whenever I'm able to I know in junior college basketball, West Texas gets a lot of love, right? You've, you've played South Plains this year. You played Odessa last year. Just talk a little bit about, you know, the the state of Region 14 and wow. people who may not be <laughs> as familiar with Region right. 14. Region and, and deservedly so. Not only not only are there big-time programs over there, they've done a really good job at the national tournament, too. So uh, they are, and, and it's wars every time you go over there, and it's well coast bunches over there. Um, you know, unfortunately, and just me being honest, Region 14, I think we need to have a better showing at the national tournament when we go. But uh, there's no night off. And that's what I love about it. Not only is it well coached from top to bottom, uh, we have players in this conference on every team where you're like, I mean, holy hell, this kid is great, or you know what I mean? Things like that. Um, Region 14, uh, you, you can't look at the records. I mean, credit to Angelina last year that came in and blew the doors off of us. They were a three and four conference team. Uh, every day they're going to be ready to fight. They're incredibly well coached over there. And it's humbling to my guys. Hey, you keep getting patted on the back enough. There's somebody out there that is going to beat you. You know what I mean? And so um, every night you have to come in with this focus and this attention to detail. And that's what I love. And we have coaches riddled through this region that have not only 
coached at a high level. They've won at a high level. They've been at Hutch and won some games. And so um, this is one of those things that, you know, if you're lucky enough to make it out the region or the region tournament, um, you're really, really prepared when you go to the conference tournament or excuse me, the national tournament. And and that's what I love about region 14. Uh, it's anybody's night, any given night. And uh, don't look at seedings. Uh, we know sometimes in other areas of the region, it's clear who the top two teams are. Um, here, it's not clear. Uh, here it's not clear. Some people battle through injuries, you know, whether it be, you know, they're missing guys for a couple games and they may tuck a couple losses or, you know, somebody plays really well at home and they lose one on the road or, you know, sometimes you just don't show up to play a night. And so um, those things kind of go in the mix. But uh, I've been really blessed to be in this region because uh, to me, and yes, it is being a little bit biased, but uh, I think we're, you know, one of the top regions in the country for sure. I think, I think region 14, I mean, Tell me what you think, Nick Nielsen, <laughs> that uh, the region 14 uh, is at least on the, the top half of the league this year is probably as good as it's been in a long time. Um, you know, I think I think there's there's three legitimate like, you know, top kind of 12, 15 area programs that any one of those, if they made a run to the championship game, nobody would be like, oh, man, that's shocking. Right. right? You know, there's a lot of talent on these squads. Yeah, and to some extent, that right, that probably hurts you, right? Because if Trinity Valley and Panola weren't as good as they are, and you finish the year twenty-eight and two, but one of them happens to beat you in the tournament, you probably still get an at-large. But you guys kind of all three kind of beat up on each other and, and brings you down a lot. But I, I'm I guilty. That's where that back. strength of schedule will come in this year, though, where the NJCA yes. has has definitely put more of an emphasis on it and is going to do even more so, I think, going forward emphasizing teams that have that really good strength of schedule so that when Lee college goes out and, and plays real teams all year, you know, going to get the benefit of the doubt, even if you drop one that, you know, just stuff happens. Right. But the, the, the makeup of the, the team report card is still, you know, elite. Right. Yeah. I, I, I've been guilty of watching all three of the, you know, the big three, not to, you know, slight Angelina or any of the others. I mean, the Roadrunners might be the best nickname in junior college basketball. Maybe it's the Gila Monsters, but they're certainly a top five nickname team. Hey, Godsdale exists, okay? The Fighting Artichokes. It's just, hey, it's, well, I don't even know why we're on In all fairness, they're D2. They're D2. Right. <laughs> um, but bringing it back to, you know, your coaching, I can tell you have a love for the game and you love your kids. But, you know, what do you enjoy the most about coaching at the junior college level? I get to be hands-on. I ask a lot of questions, um, especially with other coaches and things like that. You know, what 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 is what is the difference? What is the the thing that, you know, um, separates and um, we do everything right. So when that light bulb goes off for a freshman, you see it and you feel like attached to it. We don't have academic advisors. And, you know, when somebody needs to run an errand or needs something at a store, that five to seven minutes to CVS or to a Walmart or anything like that, you're really getting connect to connect with them on a personal level. And that's what I love most about junior college. It's personal. It's personal. And I think that uh, for all the special coaches out there to do it the right way, um, that's the thing that kind of keeps them in junior college. It's personal. Um, and and again, you get to feel the effects of what you do every single day. And, and hey, this isn't working. You kind of get to change it. You don't have to make wholesale changes. You don't have you, you, you don't have to put band-aids on it. And it switches right from year to year. It's a different curveball with a different group of guys. So it kind of keeps you on your toes a little bit. And you don't have the uh, the you know ability just to kind of see a process out for four years. You got to be elite. You got to be sharp. You got to recognize it and you got to attack. And uh, and I really appreciate that and I enjoy that and it's uh it's difficult at times and it's tough at times but again being a competitor you know you kind of you kind of thrive on that interaction and in, in those adversities so my final question for you before I turn it over to Brandon I think it's probably a softball I know you're going to give me some good coach speak answer <laughs> but you guys have played some of the toughest competition in the country you guys in my opinion are certainly in the mix as a team that's capable of winning it all what are you looking for over the next six weeks that you need to see from your guys to, to hoist that championship trophy up Saturday afternoon in Hutchinson, Kansas? Uh, maturity. Um, I think that over the last three years, we've really, really strived hard to be a national team like the San Jacinos used to be, like the Tylers used to be. 
um, you know what I mean? Like the, you know, the Vincennes are and, you know, the South Plains is our, um, we're getting people's best shot. And every day you have to come work knowing that you're, you're not going to see what you've seen on film the last two months. You're going to see somebody that really, really, really wants to beat you. And so uh, maturity is what I need to see from my guys. Just understanding everybody's in the dog days. Everybody's nicked up. Are you going to come and work every single day because of the big picture? Right. And, and uh, you know, I appreciate the question, but the truth of the matter is, Man, I'm I'm so focused on Wednesday. Like, you know, Hutchinson still seems like a pipe dream a little bit. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I just want to be the best we can be for those three days and three or four days in March uh, where we may have to, you know, battle it out with everybody in our conference to even try to get an opportunity to Kansas. So um, if we can be a mature bunch, if we can understand what's in front of us and, and understand our position, uh, you know, we could be special, you know, but the target's on our back right now. And when you pray to have a really good program that comes with it. And so, um, so that that's really what I'm just most focused on, you know, going forward. Coach, I get to uh, always wrap up the interviews here with the most important, hard hitting uh, fact finding questions. Okay. Um, so, so I hope you're ready for this, but okay, here we go. Big game. You guys, you guys get the big win, right? No special occasion. Maybe it's Coach Casey's birthday. I don't right. know. Right. Right. So, so we're going out. We're going out tonight. Right. And you take the team and you pull into the parking lot and you get the glow of the red and green neon sign of Chili's. Right. What are you having at Chili's? Hey, this is, you know what? This is a tough question, but I'm telling you I'm ready for it. Okay. And I appreciate it was a food question. I was going to complain about that. You know what I mean? If I didn't get a food question, <laughs> I was going to be upset. I'm getting the triple dipper. I'm getting Ooh. the triple dipper. Okay. okay. I'm getting the mozzarella sticks. I'm getting the boneless uh buffalo bites, uh honey chipotle. Gotta have that. And then I'm getting the uh the 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 burger bites, man. And 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 we're enjoying that. I'm washing that down with a Dr. Pepper, and life is good, you know. Back in college, they took it off the menu. They used to have these things called buffalo chicken fajitas. I should have bought stock in chilies <laughs> as much as I ate that stuff. You know what I mean? But, um, and you know what, this is what I'll also say about chilies. They have an underrated chips and salsa game. People don't talk about their chips and salsa salts. It just right. Sauces, you know, salted, the chips are salted. Great. Sauce is really good. I, I don't think they get enough love. So that's where well, I'm at. We'll, we'll reach out to chilies about the chicken fajitas and see what can be done. Um, at least in, uh, you but know, the blue cheese crumbles, area. like you can't beat it, you know? So, <laughs> well, you know what? I'm a blue cheese I, man I, myself. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Lee college is doing enough right now that maybe we can convince your local chilies to just do something special for when you come in, you know, they just got it kind of ready, you know, just have it ready. Absolutely. Like an off menu so. item. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. You know, you know, so, but no, but call uh, it the coach Wade. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, or call it the Juco jam and it just be a hodgepodge of stuff, you know, we can <laughs> just go start that ordering that. Just yeah. go in and tell them, and they'll be like, what is that? What be is like, that? I talked to corporate, and they said you would make this for me, and then they'll just probably do it. Yeah, the what, what's your name? Sorts... You're obviously not on the ball here. Yeah, yeah. the key of that's just extreme confidence. Exactly. <laughs> Unwavering extreme confidence. Absolutely, absolutely. But... Keep eye contact, don't break stride. Confidence. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> but again, I just want to I want to say again, guys, thank you, because um, it, it man, it's so nice just to have voice in JUCO and you guys striving to just touch every corner of the country and, and how appreciative we are. And, um, and you know, nine times out of 10, how right you guys are, just that unbiased, unfiltered opinion. So uh, we really appreciate it. We hope we can keep making you guys proud just as JUCO and putting out a good product. But I just thank y'all so much for having me. Well, we appreciate you coming on, Coach, and we uh, we are certainly happy to uh, to do what we can to help spread the word of JUCO. So when we come back, we are going to dive into the grind.
Welcome back to Juco Jam. We are going to transition to the grind where we talk about a current junior college player doing great things. Today, we're going to talk about Martel Williams from Utah State Eastern. He is a 6'3 wing from Las Vegas, averaging 25 points a game, 38% from three, hitting 75% of his free throws, which I respect, and an incredible 7.9 rebounds per game. And I hear that he likes to play guitar. Brandon, tell me more about Martel. Yeah, he does like to play guitar. Um, <clears throat> you know, I forget the the NJCA slogan. Uh, opportunities are made here, something like that. Um, this is an this is another great example of an opportunity. Uh, you know, junior college opportunities don't come in the same shape and size. Uh, you know, there's academic things. There's uh, under um, under recruited things, there's, you know, international players, it's just everywhere. And Martel is a, is a different one where, um, you know, he, he had the, the COVID year and then he, uh, and then he had a medical red shirt and then he played coming off of a medical red shirt and, and just wasn't really able to find the traction, um, you know, that he needed or wanted. And so, you know, the opportunity arose for him to, to go and play at Utah State Eastern, still with eligibility. And now he's going to graduate with a bachelor's degree from Utah State because of the way that the system uh, works like that. So you've got, you've got an older kid who's taking advantage of the opportunity that the NJCAA provided him. Um, and I just think it's a cool story because, you know, even though he's older and, and um, you know, he's got a lot of Division One experience, uh, junior college gave him like a second life uh, in basketball here. And he's taken full advantage of that. And, you know, regardless of what somebody's background is, how old they are, whatever, I just think that's super cool that the NJCA uh, is able to do that and provide these opportunities for guys to really hit the reset button, regardless of their circumstance. And to, to clarify, he'll graduate with a bachelor's degree and he'll have two years to play um, where he can work on his master's, right? Yep. How cool is that, right? Like you're you're going to have come away from uh, basketball, even if you never play another minute of basketball the rest of your life when you finish college with a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, and that doesn't happen without junior college. Yeah, that's awesome. Now we're going to transition to the show. This is a, another really great story, and we think we're getting his name right, but if, if we're not, we apologize. We're doing our best. Uh, Acker, Acker. Did I get that right, Brandon? I think that's right. Okay. Um, currently at Sanford, played for Coach Donnie Tindall at Chipola, 6'9", junior from Melbourne, Australia. And I want to start with his Chipola stats first. He averaged 8 and 5 at Chipola. At Samford, at the Division I level, he's averaging 17 points, six rebounds a game. He's been in double figures all but three games, and he had a 35-point outing for Western Carolina. Like, everything seems to be clicking for this young man right now. Yeah, and I think he's a perfect example of uh, why people recruiting at the four-year level need to really dig into, um, you know, who these players are, uh, both on and off the court what kind of coaching they're getting, um, you know, all that sort of stuff. And, and then remember uh, what their job is. Their job is to uh, develop good players, not uh, uh, assemble a roster of already completed products, right? Um, you know, junior college coaches have to every year take in all these players from all these crazy backgrounds, stick them together some way, develop them as fast as possible and try and win games. And, you know, it seems more and more that four-year coaches are kind of like uh, looking for somebody that they don't have to do much with. And I'm like, well, you're a basketball coach. You're not a basketball manager. Uh, you're a coach. Coach them. And uh, Coach Bucky has done a phenomenal job coaching up Acker Acker at, at Samford. Uh, you know, Bucky didn't forget that, you know, I need to take these kids. I, I need to take somebody with promise and I need to develop that promise. And, and it's paid off for him in a big way this year, Sanford having one of their best seasons uh, in a very long time and, uh, and Acker Acker having a, a big hand in that. That's a great story. All right. When we return, stay with us. We're going to have our closing thoughts on what we call the six man. As the second largest intercollegiate athletic association in the country, 
The NJCAA serves not only a pivotal role in college athletics, but in higher education. The NJCAA Foundation aims to move the association forward through resources, grant programs, and other special initiatives. Your gift to the NJCAA Foundation will make a difference and create opportunities. Intensity fuels these champion student athletes to greatness. Zurich Insurance is proud to be the official provider of student athlete insurance for the National Junior College Athletic Association. Throughout the highs, we cheer along to their screams of victory. Throughout the lows, we support them through their tears of defeat. Zurich Insurance, helping student athletes play the sport they love. Welcome back to Juco Jam. We are now going to the sixth man with our closing thoughts. I want to talk about the rise of Cobras. A little G.I. Joe reference for you. Two teams named Cobras are having terrific year. I'm going to start in the state of North Carolina with Caldwell Tech. They're 18-1. and one. They've won 13 games in a row. Their only loss was to Indian River, 126-120 to 120 at a neutral court. And they have three wins against teams that have been ranked or receiving votes at some point in this season versus Harkham, Chattanooga State, and Monroe. We're going to transition to the NJCAA Division II level and talk about Parkland, also the Cobras. 19-2, they've won three in a row after a two-point loss to Danville. These Cobras combined for a 37-3 and record and almost a 93% winning percentage. I don't believe that there are any native Cobras to either Illinois or North Carolina, but these Cobras are happy and winning. It's exciting to see how they're going to finish the season. Absolutely. Um, two teams. Easy, easy, easy transition for you, right? Easy transition. Yeah. Two, two teams, two teams you could see in the national tournament, you know, that uh, we, we could, we could be just going Cobras all over the place between Hutchinson and Danville. Um, <clears throat> my sixth man is, and if anybody that follows me on Twitter uh, knows that uh, six man on paper uh, number one in my heart. Uh, Dalton Necht, uh, just a phenomenal uh, junior college player story. Um, everybody's been writing about it now because he's blowing up at Tennessee. Uh, I don't I don't even remember what the stats are, or what the history was, but something like five games in a row of 25 uh, plus in SEC play, which is ridiculous <laughs> when you really think about it. And um, uh, I, I just love the fact that the calls have started uh, now and having the conversations with the NBA staffs and things that uh, Dalton is starting to play and, and you know, may end up being a uh, a lottery pick. Uh, you know, our next lottery pick, uh, Chris Duarte being the last one, um, you know, Dalton has just just really focused in on uh, the things that are important uh, his entire basketball career is somebody that was uh, unheralded is not even the right word, um, you know, coming out of high school. So super, super cool to see uh, an awesome kid like him. Just just check all the boxes as he goes along. He went to junior college at Sterling, Northeastern Colorado, goes to Northern Colorado, was super under recruited out of Northeastern, you know, plays there for two years, does his thing then moves on for his final season to Tennessee and just shows up and starts beating the crap out of everybody. Um, you know, junior college uh, uh, needs its heroes like anybody else. And, um, and Dalton is, is absolutely doing that this year. And there, you can definitely see the physical maturity in him over the years too, right? I mean, he's, he's put on a lot of muscle. He's gotten a lot stronger. He has a body at this point that I think translates to the NBA game, right? You have to be big and strong to to handle the grind of of the nba season yep yep i mean he he had a little ankle injury uh middle of the season that would have put a lot of guys out for weeks um he just played through it and you know wasn't himself for a few games but he still played through it helped his team win uh now that he's healthy he's just off on a different level right now i mean there's there's legitimate talk of him being uh the sec player of the year and when you're the SEC player of the year, now you start talking about, are you the national player of the year? He's got plenty of opportunity left to, to continue this, this streak and get into that conversation, which, um, you know, my head would explode. I think if uh, a junior college player won national player of the year. 
Well, he's certainly deserving of it. And it's a, it's a great story. It's a testament of hard work, but so many kids need to go where they can play and develop. And there's so many more kids who I, I believe who would benefit getting in two years out of junior college than, you know, sitting on a bench somewhere their freshman, sophomore years, play and develop, give yourself a chance to blossom into the best player that you could possibly be. That's a great story about Dalton. Brandon, another great show under our belts. Thank you as always. And uh, consult NJCAA.com. Make sure you know when these game times start because we have a fantastic week of basketball. I look forward to being with you here again next week and talking about all the great games. Oh, 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 oh